I think that's the problem most people think. They think that they're taking something from people because they, they either they don't believe enough in their value of what they're giving or the system that it's going to be delivered correctly. And, and those two key things have to fall into place too. Welcome to Sales Made Easy, a podcast for business and personal growth. Join Harry Spate as he hosts sales experts and business owners who share their journeys of personal growth and business success. Now, here's your host, Harry. Hey, what is the good word? Today with us, we have Joe Graham, a superstar consultative sales professional working for a Fortune 100 company, and he helps people get this, to be better at sales. And here on the Sales Made Easy podcast, we love that topic. So Joe, welcome to the Sales Made Easy podcast. What's the good word? Yeah, thank you. First and foremost, Harry, thank you for having me on. The good word is, is you can get better each and every day. I think a lot of times people get caught up in, we have to be perfect right away, but sales, I fell into it. 20 years ago, I started at sales and I sucked. I mean, I sucked. The first guy I talked to, I literally told him I couldn't do it. I was working for Home Depot, selling a gutter, and I was doing a flip chart. I was so green. I'm flip charting a gutter. Now, a gutter's like $3 a foot at the time, and he's like, dude, I don't care my manager's there, too. And I'm like, I can't do this. I can't do this. And he goes, dude, I like Home Depot. I'm buying you the way. Just keep going. If you need to go through a flip chart, great. If not, here's my card. And I was like, wait a minute. It's not about me. If I just solve their problems, I'm good. So it was like a godsend type of moment because like I fell into sales and I thought I was done after that first second and it turned out to be for me and helped. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So the flip charts are the $3 gutter pieces. That's great. Uh, th there's always new stuff that I hear and uh, that's a great story. So thanks for sharing that. So this is definitely a challenge. You mentioned it, that you look at sales as solving problems. A lot of people who are newer to sales look at sales as something that's grotesque and they just get, they shy away from it. I've heard people say things like, if I have to sell, I'm going to have to go out of business because I hate selling. And I just love the approach about uh, what you just described, which is solving problems. When did you pick up on that? Was that early on in your first few conversations or what's the deal there? Um, I think it went through, I, I go, like everyone goes through that sales process. Well, you watch the Grand Cardones, you watch the Jordan Belfort, you see the movies like, oh, I can just da 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 this. Or you're like, grew up in the small town like I did where sales cars, salesmen are sleazy and all that craziness. Yeah. And what I did was I just started going and I was trying to do the tricks and everything and it didn't work out well. Then all of a sudden what ended up happening was I just started helping people. And instead of trying to sell them, I put myself in their shoes. And it helped me to the point where I was able to connect with them and treat them like it's my business, their business. I'm just helping you fix something. Yeah, that's funny. So you actually tried to do some of the uh, craftiness that is associated yeah. with some of the names that you mentioned. Yeah. And so what made you stop that? Because I've, I've done the it, same thing. I tried some it things too. Yeah. It felt bad. It didn't feel authentic. It felt icky. Like, I'm very good with, like, I know NLP. I know all the tricks. I know I can get them into a heightened state. But then they started canceling. I'm like, wait a minute, what happened? I no. did the right steps, and I didn't want the cancels and the chargebacks. Mm. So what ended up happening was I was like, well, wait a minute. How would I like to be sold? How would I like to have things happen for me? And what happened was is when I switched it and made it more of a human touch approach, it worked so much better. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's one of those things where you kind of learn from the people I think that you're around and what they're doing. And you say that, I mean, you see what they're doing and say, well, I guess I have to do that to be good. I have to do this and so forth. And then if that doesn't feel right, you try it. Does it feel right? You say, well, I'm going to have to do things a little bit differently. And then you like, for me, I stumbled on my own way of doing things, but it was a work in progress over years and years. Uh, was that true with you? Yeah, and well, in every sales is different. So I started out doing home improvement sales, in person, face to face, wife, husband, son, and windows, roofing, siding. Yeah. Then I shifted to doing like e commerce for educational product. Then I moved into heavy equipment, then oil and gas investments, which wow. is the top five in 5% 5 of people in the world accredited investors. And each one of those sales was different. I had to reach out to them and talk to them differently. You talk to a wife and husband about windows a lot differently than you would talk to 
a CEO of a corporation and you mm. just learn what they needed and how you could approach them and how you could help them. Yeah, so true. So uh, the home improvement thing, were you, was that like a one call close? Um, I was different. So okay. we were supposed to do a one call close. I yeah. did not. And that's how I got them to work. That's how I got mm -hmm. them to move forward and do what they needed to do. Um, with it because I was able to connect, say, hey, you know what, Harry, I can come back. And all of a sudden they like, what? And then I started this taking away from the one call close. I go, the next guy come in is going to give you this one deal this one time. And if you can do that, you can get it. I'm like, look, I'm just going to give you the 10% Home Depot is going to give you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to treat you like I want to be treated. And that's how I would win those deals because I took the sales ickiness out. I took the car sales thing out and I started pointing out in that game. This guy's going to come in and do this. Oh, who's coming with you? Oh, they're going to take a window. They're going to throw cash through because you have stuff going out. I have the lamp here. See this lamp? I can put this up if you want, or do you mm. just want to talk business? And I would just treat them like a normal human being. And they're like, oh, I like this better. You can come back. I can come back next week if you want. They can't. Right. And yes. that's that one, the game. Yeah. Th that gimmicky stuff uh, sounds like you're treating them as a real person, which is what people really want, right? I had a person one time that worked on my sales team that came from the home improvement industry. And he told me horror stories about how he stayed there. Even when people were saying he was tired, he was late. One of them would go to bed. He's still in the living room talking to the other one, trying to get that deal. Because if he left, he felt like there was no opportunity, which was, I thought was really interesting when he got into the corporate B2B space where we were more consultative. He tried to close deals on one conversation. It's like, no, you don't need to be that way. You can actually build relationship and trust over time yeah. and you can sell more profitably by doing that. So it was a big change for him. So how did you make that adjustment when you went from there and then you tried other things? What kind of learning curve was that for you? It's like starting over in certain regards, but you have the skill sets that you're there. So I knew that when I went from doing the in-home service to making phone calls for heavy equipment, I was like, I'm just going to still treat this like it's my business. I'm still going to try and do it. But now I'm mm. talking to people on the phone. So instead of being able to read their body cues, their body language, all that stuff, I only hear their voice. I'm like, oh, crap, I don't know what I'm doing. So I listen mm. to Jordan Belfort because he has a straight line system, so listen to some other stuff. I'm like, I can't do that because it feels icky. But I can listen to what the customer's asking and then just give them a solution. So I just started putting in that problem solving, like you said, that consultative pr approach. And I made a bunch of calls. So here's the thing. You mm -hmm. have two things you can control, your input and your skill level. Well, in the beginning, you're going to suck at anything you do. So you need to have more touch points. You need to do more cold calls. You need to do more emails. You need to do more social outreach. At that time, it's just cold call and emails. But now you can do like LinkedIn and stuff like that. But I literally just started calling in. As an old sales guy told me, sometimes you just got to get bloodied and you got to get in there and get the phone call and and mess up and say it wrong. And then be like, ah, oh. and then you, what you do is you don't think about it. You just do the next one. You you critique it. You learn a little bit. You do the next one. You critique it. You mm -hmm. do a little bit. You do the next one. And then when you get one that works, you write that down and think, what did I do here? And it was it what I said or was it how it worked? And then you just kind of build your process to the point where I was, because then I started selling cell phones for a third party mm. company that didn't even work. I wasn't even a good vein. I had to like do that, drive Uber, do all this stuff. So I'm a 20 year, 20 year overnight success. When you look at it, I know we talked about my fortune 100 company, but yeah. we're talking about the stuff in the beginning. I would go sure. good and I'd go back. Yeah. Yeah. So there were lots of ups and downs. It sounds like what uh, helped you through those periods. Where you're like um, doing Uber and doing other things, especially it's, yeah, that's a lot. Uh, my wife's belief in me. That was one of the biggest things because yeah. if you have the right partner who trusts you and believes in you, it works. Uh, secondly, the network I started getting into. I started listening mm -hmm. to podcasts. I started listening to business owners. So I did a little bit of a different approach. Instead of just listening to like your sales guru mm -hmm. people, I started listening yeah. to business owners and how they built stuff from uh, Andy Frisella to Betros to different people that had built a business from the ground up because they had to do sales because any business you do. And I'm like, I can go with what they're saying and treat customers that way. And I started mm -hmm. doing that, started reading books, and I started going to networking events with people that were farther along than I was so mm -hmm. that I could learn from them and grow and just become the person I needed to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you just said that, um, become the person that you needed to be, what, was going through your mind 
at the time? I mean, because you can look back and say that, but can you remember what you were thinking when you're going through all of this and learning and being around different people? Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking I was a failure at that point because oh, I had went goodness. and I started doing home improvement sales. I did really good. Then I moved into the heavy equipment. Then I did the lung gas and like, you're progressing, you're making more money. I'm taking care mm. of my family. It's great. And then I had to walk away from it and start over and my income got cut in half. Mm -hmm. So like you have that whole mental shift in your head where you're just like, oh my gosh. It's like one of the few times we had to go on food stamps for a little bit because we were still trying to build the dream. Mm. And it's funny because it leads into me getting into corporate America with Spectrum, the company I had just moved from. I had literally had to go back to door knocking. Mm -hmm. Again, go back to mom and pop, face to face, selling mm -hmm. to get into Spectrum. And um, the cool thing there was simply this. I started doing that. I started getting back comfortable with just helping people and making it into a problem solving thing and helping them with their internet and phone, which was what I was doing at the time. And then it opened up to a B2B role nationwide for mid-market selling like dedicated fiber internet, voice over IP, that type of solution. Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing with that is I kept taking those principles and I just dialed and did what I needed to do. And the first year I did the uh, fiber internet, I hit 100% and got to go to their present circle thing, which is the top 5% of the people there. So mm -hmm. I was at like 101%, barely squeaked in. Yeah, so I kept doing those principles. It yeah. gets better. Here's the craziness yeah. of it. The next year, I I hit 152%. Oh. Next year after that, I hit 162%. Then I hit 172. And then I guess last year, I was about to go again. I think it was at like 165. Because you know when you start doing really good and you break the quota, say raise it. Salespeople, yeah, you know this. When you start crushing the quotas, they're going to raise it. I broke the quota. They raised it. And now I shifted over to T-Mobile. But I won the president circle four years in a row. But the job right before then almost took me out. Mm. You have to understand sometimes you go through that dark place, that place where it feels like everything's just caving in. And there's three things that you can do. You have your faith, the people that you're surrounded with, and your grit not to give up. Mm, great. So that was, so what was that experience that you're talking about? Was that in the job or the job prior, which was the thing that you had to get away from? The job prior was, it was a third-party cell phone company. They were oh, okay. taking from us. They weren't, you know, like the Whoopi Wall Street yeah. type of environment. Yeah. It just was not. I'm not that guy. Now, right. can I play that role if I have to? Yes, because yeah. I can do what I, I need to do. But I just, it didn't feel right. I right. went from making almost 100 to making like 48000 a year on a family mm. five. That doesn't work. No. But then when I yeah. get into Spectrum and I start doing better, I make around 200 And that's a lot better. It makes life a lot easier. And that's where the podcast that we talked about earlier, the podcast came mm -hmm. from. Like I got to take my kids to Disney for the first time. Nice. I got to take my wife to Hawaii. We've been to Hawaii, yeah. I think, four times now. We're going to go again this September. So that's five times. Like different stuff that I like to do because I like travel. That's my yeah. thing. You may like yeah. cars, whatever. I don't care. Right. I just want to help people wake up to a life they want to live. But it took me 20 years to get to that consistent of 150K or more yeah. each year. Yeah. And it's a nice number. Right. Where you can live, where you say, look, I can do some of the things I want to do in life and so forth. And, you know, you and I are mentioning it's like sales can be like having your own franchise. You just don't have the overhead of paying all the franchise fees. Yep. I mean, sure, someone can give you a different quota, but you have a lot of flexibility to do what you want. And it sounds like you run it as your own business. Is that true? Yeah, that's how I looked at it because that way it made it feel good because we talked about the mental shifts that people have. And a lot of people that run businesses or salespeople don't want to sound salesy. Well, if I'm a business and I'm giving you a product and a service, it's cool. If, if not like a, I'm taking something from you. I think that's the problem most people think. They think that they're taking something from people because they, they, either they don't believe enough in their value of what they're giving or the system that is going to be delivered correctly. And, and those two key things have to fall into place too, because you can sell all day long, but if you don't deliver on what you're doing, mm. it's going to crash and burn. And if they don't feel comfortable with the process, it's going to crash and burn. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's so true. If you think about like um, in sales, there's so much opportunity to do the right thing. And it's, it's not complicated, <laughs> but like showing up on time, being true to your word, being there if something doesn't work is probably the biggest opportunity that people miss out on, where you make a promise, 
it doesn't quite go as planned or you're just relating what the expectations are and stuff happens and it doesn't go as planned. This is a golden opportunity to shore up the relationship. And a lot of times people run from that because they think the client's unhappy and it's, you know, it's going to all go downhill from there. What's your take on that? Well, I agree 100%. The first time I experienced it, again, their funny story was I was working for Home Depot. I sold a roof and they put it on the credit card, which mm. they got a year free, but it was an $8,000 roof. And they come in and go, we can't really do this. It's too much. I'm thinking, oh, crap, they're going to cancel. Oh, no, I break them into the store or whatever. And we had another thing where they could do a monthly payment plan. And I was so worried thinking that they were going to do that. And there was another associate that goes, well, you know, you can put them on the monthly payment plan thing. Now there's an interest. You don't get to the year free, but we can transfer you over. And they're like, that's so great. But I addressed the issue, even mm -hmm. though I was scared, even though I thought I'm going to lose. Because at that time, if that deal closed, I lost 800 bucks. 800 bucks yeah. is a significant amount when you have a yeah. young family. And I'm like freaking out. But I was like, no, I need to do the right thing if this is my roof. And we did it. We, fought, we solved the problem. And I think I've seen that so many times happen that when you help the customer, especially when it's an issue and you call them, don't wait for them to call you. If you know there's an issue, call them first. Say, mm -hmm. hey, I see this is here. It's not working out right. I want to make sure we're taking care of. All of a sudden, that trust, like you said, is gained. All of a sudden, now you're their person. Now they're like, Joe just went to bat for me. Harry just took care of something that most people would run from. And right. now guess who they're going to tell after the problem's fixed? If they need something that you give, they're going to refer you because you took care of their problem. Yeah. And then the converse is just as true in the sales process. This is another thing is I hear people say things like, well, I'm waiting for them to get back to me. I'm waiting for your competition to get back to me. And I would just throw out, if this is the way they are trying to get the business, how will they be after they get the business? And it's like, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's just, just yep. throw in the seed of doubt. Uh, and that works as well, right? Where you're using someone's simple shortcomings to help you move the sale process along in your favor is the way I've looked at it. And this thing, I mean, I've, I've spent all kinds of money solving problems over the years. And some people will say things like, well, it's not my job. It's the company's job and so forth. You know, they're responsible, blah, blah, blah. It's like, just, just let it come out of your pocket. There's so much good that comes from that in the, in the world of sales that when you pay for one of your own mistakes, instead of putting it off on someone else, it's just, it just, it seems like you reap more benefits by doing that than you know, throwing it back at the company or someone else's problem, right? Any thoughts on that? And it all goes down to having a big pipeline and having enough customers that you're able to do that without it hurting you badly. Like, it sucks. Right. I, like, I've done yeah. it. I've given stuff sure. back. I said, no, I'm going to let you out of this deal. In fact, I'm going to refer you to this guy because he can help you more. Like, you're going to what? This yeah. guy can help you more than me. So I can't help you. You do this. And all of a sudden, my manager would be like, what did you do? I'm like, I referred to them. Why did you do that for? You can't. I'm like, yes, I can. Watch. Within three months, I'd get three or four referrals from that person because I took care of them. And now I got three times the value because I did the right thing. I think people just think too much about how it affects them instead of if you always are thinking about how it affects your customer, how you can help them, it builds that value and it comes <laughs> back in like droves. And you don't always see where it comes from. It might not be them, but it oh, does. It just comes yeah. back. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. This is one of those things that I've always said that it's going to come back and you may not know how it comes back. And you kind of just said the same thing. So I've always looked at it in a sense that you put something out into the world and say, you put it out in the direction of the North. Well, something can come to you and land in your lap from the South and you just take it as, yeah, I just had this thing fall in my lap. And it didn't have to do hardly anything. Sometimes you have to do so much for a sale and it doesn't come through. And you say, I worked my butt off for that one and it didn't happen. What a waste of time. Something else falls in your lap. I just look at it as like, if you do the right things, the ones who work hard are going to get lucky. The stuff will fall in your lap periodically. Sounds like you think similarly. Yeah, because what you put into the world, you can only control your input. That's the thing people get so frustrated with. Mm. I did all this work and didn't get the sales. Well, here's the thing. You can only control your dials, your calls, yeah. 
your emails, your social media outreaches, and your skill level when you get them on the phone. That's all you can control. So all we do is put as much out as possible so it comes back just like a farmer. You're sowing all the time, and you don't know what's going to come back at what level. But once you have enough people that you're talking to, the law of averages happen. That's why people that aren't as great at sales but have more tenacity, make more calls, more emails, do better than a lot of talented people. I've seen yeah. so many talented people that are probably better than me at closing someone, but they've only made 10 calls a week. I just made 500. I win. Right. That's how the yeah. game plays. Especially if you have some decent skills, right? I mean, and you it's hard not to get better just by pure repetition of making the calls and looking inwardly, which sounds like you're doing because you're saying you even took notes on what was working and maybe what didn't work. And so you're making adjustments versus this concept that sales is purely a numbers game. And if you just do the same thing over and over again and expecting different results, I don't agree with that. It's like you have to make the adjustments in order to be better. And that's where the results come in. Thoughts? Yeah, for sure. It's just like any sporting event. At halftime, they go in and they make changes. So they might have been getting their butts kicked. I'm a Lions fan. The Lions were destroying the 49ers. They were just, I was like, we're finally going to go to the Super Bowl. It's never (laughs) happened in my lifetime, right? And Uh, San Francisco made the adjustments. It's like the Lions were a totally different team. It's the same thing with sales. If you go in and you're having some issues and you're falling forward and all, you go and you go and you take some time. You go, okay, maybe I should say it this way. Maybe I need to find the best person who's doing sales with what I'm doing and just Sit and listen to them. Don't mm. bug them. Don't right. ask them for favors. Just say, can I just sit by you? I'm going to say nothing. I just want to hear how you do things. And most people are like, cool, yeah, as long as you don't bug me, I don't care. And you learn and grow and build from there. The problem is, is we're too prideful. Most people are too prideful. They think, if I just keep doing it, I can do it on my own. Asking for help, to help is strength, right. especially in the... And you find that you know people want to give it, right? If you ask them politely, mm-hmm. maybe take them out for lunch, say you need a little help, would you be open to you know, spending a few minutes with me. I mean, most people are going to say yes to that, right? Yeah, and if they're not, most then, people care. yeah, exactly. And if they're not, they're just not for you. But it's, I mean, uh, yeah, so it's good stuff. So one of the things we mentioned earlier, Joe, is the, so this is good for people who want to be better in sales. What about those who are just struggling to get started? They're, they're starting the business and they're intimidated by selling in the first place. What are some of the things that might help with mindset or psychology here what's your why why did you go into business did you go into business because you're really super excited about the product that you sell did you have a service that you could help people are you passionate about what you're doing focus on that and start talking to people about your passion and what you're doing and all because if you build enough value the price is irrelevant if you have four times the value typically they're going to buy also with the mental shift it's not about you Take Mm. notes right here. Write this down. It is not about you when you're in business. It's about them. It's about your customers, how you can help them, how you can set stuff in motion, how you can solve their problem. You're not selling them. You're helping them. Ziegler said that you help enough people, you'll never have to want again in your day. The reason that we have this mindset is you watch too many stupid videos on like Wolf of Wall Street or like Boiler Room and all that, which is fake. I mean, there's some truth to it, but it's fake for the most part. You're not just going to call up. You're not sleazy. If you have imposter syndrome or you're worried about how you're coming across, that means you care. Actually lean into that because now you're going to help them give them a proposal that's fair for you and them because it's okay for you to get paid for your skills, knowledge, and stuff you've learned and go from there. I think if it's people think that they're used, that people will take them as used car salesmen, not all used car salesmen are bad. Mm-hmm. I know some really right. cool ones, yep. but that, that vibe, and I think that's the problem in reality Sales is just helping people. That's what it is. Yeah, hundred percent. It's so good. Uh, lots of good stuff that's out of there. You know, when you think about the used car sales person, the stereotypical nineteen eighties movie, used cars. You know, that comes to mind for me. But the reality is that you know, selling can get us into a whole different lifestyle. And if you really care about people, like you mentioned, sometimes we have this imposter thinking going on. I realize that I'm going to outwork even myself. When I'm thinking like an imposter, I know I'm going to have to work really hard and make this work and make sure the client is really happy. And that's really a good thing. You know, the the ones who are not caring about being an imposter are the imposters. 
100%. the rest of us who care, we're not. And so whatever doubts we have, we're going to outwork it. And who would you rather buy from? Someone like you who is going to work really hard for the money or someone who just doesn't care nearly as much as you. And it's going to be you. And that's why it's much easier to sell with that mindset. Any other thoughts on this? Yeah, just also the flip side. So I have grinded and grinded in the hustle culture. And I, I understand there's times you had to grind. Mm -hmm. Remember that you have to still improve your vessel. You still have to be able to function and be at a high level. So I'm really big on self-care as well. Like I mm -hmm. schedule my day. I time block. I do a lot of stuff. So there's times in the morning where I'll go for a walk because I like nature. I might do like a ah, nice. prayer or meditation, whatever vein mm -hmm. you go there. I do. I lift weights. I do things to help me so that when I show up, I can be 100% present. But I always want to put the caveat on there. Because a lot of times it'll sound like I'm like, hustle, hustle, go, go, go. No, I'm very much into doing what you need to do. But I'm also into blocking it. And I'm going to do this for the next two hours. I'm going to make calls. I'm going to be intentional with calls. No emails, no nothing. But then that way later on that day, I know I've done my touch points. I've done what I need to do. So now I can spend time with the family. Now I can do things that I want to enjoy and live a life I want to wake up to because I've made it a priority for both. Yeah. And for people, some of us, we get really excited with business. And I remember having a similar awakening where I was working really hard, you know, the whole work hard, play hard thing. But I realized I was spending a lot of time away from the family. And then it's just like, what are the hours that I'm spending away from the family and are they worth the money? And the answer was no. Because I realized that my family is not always going to be at home with me. They're not always going to be around me, my kids. Like right? it was once they hit the teen years, it's like, I don't care, dad, just give me money. I knew that was coming. So, you know, it was just an awakening that you got to have in life is prioritized is that your family is not always going to be, you know, if you have five kids, they're not going to be five kids with you forever. So, yep. yeah, good observation. Good for you. So your podcast is uh, the 150K podcast. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. It became an epiphany. So I started doing good in sales. I started doing the hitting the present circle. And like I mentioned before, going to Disney, going to Hawaii, I'm like, I want to help dads. Because in my head, I was thinking, dad, take their kids to Disney, mm -hmm. take their wives to Hawaii, whatever their place is. That's just our place. I like yep. if I went to myself, I'd go to Montana. So I'm like, I'm just going to start a podcast. I have a bunch of cool friends and I'll just see what I can do to help people. Because if you hit 150K, you're in the top 10% of income earners according to 2017. I think it's 178, but I'm not going to change the podcast name now because inflation, it changes. You know, that's how right. it is. But it's step one, because you know, there's really only 1% of Americans are millionaires. And everyone's like, oh, you got to be a millionaire, blah, 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 blah. Mm. And 90% of people online that you see saying they're millionaires are not. They have fake right. Lambos and they rent the house that they're living in. But if you can get to 150K and start from there, you can start waking up to a life you love. So I brought in a bunch of different people from different walks of life. We talk about finances, sales, business, self-help, different stories from mm -hmm. personal trainers to business consultants to CEOs. Like I've had, I've done 178 episodes now, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. And I've had the whole gambit you can have on there from... I, it, it's just, it was a fun thing because it was twofold. So it is my give back, but it's my free give to me because now I'm bringing people on that I'd had to pay 20, 30, 40, $50,000 to consult me. But because mm. I have a vehicle that they can reach my audience, they do it for free. And now I get to ask the question. So it's like a double whammy cool thing for me there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a fun type of thing. And then I do do some short uh, solo episodes. So my solo episodes is about 15, mm -hmm. 20 minutes. If you're just hearing me talk, I'm not going to go an hour because I figure yeah. I have ADHD attention spans, not as long. If I'm doing an actual podcast with the guests and we're talking like we're doing now, an hour to an hour and a half is fine because there's that dynamic. But yeah, that, that's 150K. Yeah, that's great. So for more of Joe Graham, uh, so the name of the podcast is The 150K. Is that it? It's a 150K podcast. Okay. Just 150K podcast. My email had to be the 150K podcast because Yahoo okay. wouldn't let me. They made me put that in. But I'm on Spotify, Apple, Breaker, iHeartRadio, pretty much anywhere, YouTube. You can pull it up and it will pull in there. I have a Facebook group called 150K podcast. If you want to join that. Nice. Okay. This has been great, Joe. Any final thoughts that you have that we might have missed? Yeah, just two quick things. One. Sure. 
As a business owner and sales professional, you chose this life, and Harry was talking about it. Your family should not have to deal with your choices. So own it 100%. If you had to get up at 5 a.m. to take care of what you chose to do because you wanted to build it, do that. Two, you can make it, and you can become who you want to be. Just don't overestimate what you do in one year because within 10, you can blow your mind. With one, one year, you might frustrate yourself. Besides that, go be great. I love it. Go be great, ladies and gentlemen. Great stuff, Joe Graham. Thank you so much for joining the podcast today. It's been great. Thank you for having me, Harry. Thank you for listening to Sales Made Easy. If you found value in our conversations, please subscribe and leave a review. Our goal is to provide practical strategies for growing your business while staying true to your values. Remember, success in sales is about serving your clients. Serve first and the selling will follow.